yesterday's series and that wasn't the case because we saw Diana early. But like during the end of the regular season, Diana was just being shut out by the fact that there were more AD junglers that would win in a 2v2 skirmish versus her. So it's hard for her to get to where she's really strong in those larger team fights. So I like the Viego pickup. I, I expect it to be a jungle pick. I also think in, in yesterday's series, you could see most of, both those players being a little bit more AD carry oriented in the mid lane and stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas Jensen loves control mages. They've been getting a little bit stronger. And so AP or AD junglers getting paired with the AP mid laner works a little bit better. Same with perks. I mean, he has a little bit larger of a play style in champion pools that he's down to play. But I think, uh, yep. you know, they'll be looking to largely be playing. I think a lot of control mages in this series compared to yesterday. And it looks like I'm wondering if they're just going to pick up Aphelios here as well, because again, we've been seeing the Braum so much more into Leona and yeah. paired with Aphelios. It's also been a really nice pick that people like. There it is. To, once again, he's a little bit more self-sufficient, but it keeps him super safe. A lot of AD bands. Yeah. Yeah, and we've been oh. seeing more Braum. There it is, Ziggs just coming through, likely going hmm. to be towards the bot lane. but. You know, we've been seeing now more Braum pickups versus Leona than we have during the mm -hmm. regular season that's always been there. And so, like, I think that's an interesting uh, transition in playoffs that we're willing to see more Braum. And the ownership of Engage will be coming through either, uh, I know we see Viego here, but it's either going to be coming out of the top lane or jungle. So I want to see how trans uh, C9 transitions this draft to allow them to get more fights. Yeah. I could be mistaken, and I'm going to double check this real quick, but I'm pretty sure that's also the first Ziggs for Tactical if it does go in the bot lane. Mm -hmm. And that wouldn't surprise me given that he, <laughs> as I get yep. distracted by that, it is the first Ziggs? Yeah, yeah okay, according so to this. I, I I believe it because it's just not a play style match for me for tactical. They want to be really aggressive. No. They want to be up in the lane. Yeah. They want to be yeah. you know, like, trying to, to scrap you. And Ziggs is just not that. That's it's, why it's, I'm not convinced that it's going to the bottom. That's why I wouldn't be surprised if it yeah. doesn't. Yeah, if, but, it, if it goes to Jensen, I also wouldn't be surprised. It's weird because it fits TL's play style, but given that they always want to go for 2v2 specifically bot lane, I would not be surprised if it's flex mid. The way I always, like for me, value scrim work. Like for instance, all the things that you practice, you want to at least kind of throw that in there for the first game. If it doesn't go back, you always have the stuff you've done during the regular season mm -hmm. that you can go into this in game two, game three, if it doesn't pan out. So if this turns into a Ziggs bot lane, makes a lot of sense and is indicative of the ah. practice. Yeah. Uh, uh, Captain no, Flower I'm, shout out uh, with the Skarner. I yeah. believe yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tactical's doing there. Or not, Mocking Sven. I'm, I'm pretty say, sure. Yeah, actually. I was going to say, we're Mocking Sven with the Ezreal and the Skarner picks. Yeah. Of all things, we've got the Renekton lock in for Team Liquid. So a very powerful pick being handed over to Alfari. Again, assuming that it's going uh, top lane, which I think at this point is a fairly safe assumption. We're going to have to blind the mid laner here for Cloud9. I think uh, this is also interesting with the now most likely Ziggs mid. I feel like you can play almost anything into it. I don't think that it's much of a flex for Team Liquid if, if they aren't. Tom Kenshin. That could go top or mid. I'm pretty sure that's top. Yeah, it's likely yeah. top. Just top to stonewall the yeah. heck out yeah. of the, the Renekton. Mm -hmm. and, and on top of that, if he, uh, Fudge has been, you know, out there in interviews saying that if he, like the last time he ended up picking uh, the Tom Kench top lane, if he didn't have faith that the enemy team had enough damage uh, in their composition, then the Tom Kench would slot. Now, if this is going to be a Ziggs bot lane, uh, and we get an answer here mid, like just consistent DPS from Team Liquid this, side, then it's going to be hard for the um, TK. Yeah, I mean, C9 have really opted into just straight front to back team fight. There's not much trickery in how the draft plays or what yeah. its, its options are going to be. I mean, both what? these teams. Whoa! It's Renekton, uh, it's Renekton mid, Ziggs bot. Yeah. And or, Sedge top. We've got the Sedge top coming out. I guess it could be Sedge mid as well. Well, I think right? it, it might be. It could also be Sedge. Lee Sin oh, mid. No, I yeah, the I, think Sedge top. I think it's Lee Sin mid no. for now. Oh, I wanted it so bad. I mean, we'll have to see this. This We're talking about trickery. I thought Team yeah. Liquid was just going to go straight front to back normal, but they did end up taking something very different than yes. uh, what we've seen from yeah. them. This is super trickery. I love it. But also, Alorm is uh, across the US right now. He's happy to see Sedge. Sad to not see it in the top lane. Yeah, and one thing to point out, I mean, just looking at this draft, there's a lot of setup here for Sidwani to get her quick mm -hmm. proc on stuns. Uh, Oriana's probably going to be targeted really early on to get her flash. And if you can keep Oriana down, then it's very easy for Team Liquid to set up dives. I'm not thinking top line, that might be too difficult, but. Welcome to day two of the LCS playoffs. Cloud9 and Team Liquid met in the finals just a few months ago. C9 barely scraped away with the win there. And now they meet in the first round as seeds four and five. The regular season has been rough to these two teams. 
But in the back of the fans' minds, they know there's still two absolute heavyweights. Yeah, these are two teams, two organizations that have extremely recently won the entire league. So excited to see this matchup here. Obviously, the top lane is a big focal point because yeah. you mentioned the spring finals. Cloud9 first blooding Alfari over and over and over. You saw the tweet in the intro, but he specifically called them out today, talking yep. about giving them false sense of confidence confidence with all of those early first bloods we do have some early information though off of blabber getting a deep ward on red and already trying to scout out jungle pathing here towards the top side of the map try and get in alfari's head yep. see if they can remind him Smart. of what went on last time around i like this so of course yes the fruit preview matchup is indeed the top lane good play to get the sweeper xp share that'll let alfari get level two off of just six cs get, yep. to get that one minute earlier and yeah, they don't know for certain how uh, how that's going down. And I love path. I love always, especially as a jungler, you just sharing the ward experience with both solo laners because it means both of them can get first wave level two. Yeah. It's not going to mean a lot versus Orion at least. In you know, he's not going to be able to force you know um, you know many trades. Does mean a bit more for Alfari, especially being on the Renekton here. Uh, Tom Kench, as LSS was talking about, very good at stonewalling a lot of top lane matchups because he gets so tanky. You don't have to use your gray health at all in lane. You just use it for the passive regen, uh, and you just go in for your trades when your grasp is up and ready. Like that. Exactly. You, If you can get your tongue lash and your grasp in a point blank trade, it is just super good to have these very short, little bursty trades for TK. Uh, other than that, you can scale up very nicely and get extremely tanky for the front line. All right, so level two, as we saw, it, uh, zone fudge off XP very briefly as the botlanders fight mm -hmm. back and forth. Zven on his, I believe, fifth Aphelios game of the split, as Mark talked about, indeed, is his tactical's first Ziggs game all time. And looking at each of the uh, champions and how they function, Teal have gone for a very early game focused composition, right? Renekton, very early game focused, looking at Ziggs, at least for solo queue. Um, he's an early game champion compared to things you're going to be against. Like, imagine six out of Aphelios for six out of Ziggs. Like, Aphelios is going to look better there. Yeah, the damage definitely falls off for Team Liquid's composition when you get later into the game, but it has a lot of strengths early on. The Sejuani pickup for jungle is most highly prized when you have those double melee solo laners to quickly stack up the passive, and you can actually go for skirmishes, especially if you're playing against a jungle that is a bit squishier, offensively oriented, like Blabber's playing the Viego here. In those duels, you will focus the opponent jungler, focus that Viego, burst him down, and it's very, very effective with either Lee Sin or Renekton at, at trying to gain priority there. And that's why Blabber playing around bottom side of the map instead of the top side of the map goes to his pushing lane there with the Aphelios uh, from Here we then. Go. They get the first bit of the slow. Q Flash gonna land. They should Passive. get this stun. There's no way Perks lives, except maybe from the turret. No, they <laughs> get him. First blood comes through to Team Liquid. The Sejuani and the melee solo laners freak. It's a match made in heaven. They get to dash forward. Really good flash there from Santorin because he knows as long as you land that knockup, there's not gonna be any escape for Perks. All you need is to get into melee range, start stacking those passives. He hits the W, which is the important part of Sejuani's kits. Uh, Jensen dashes in. He lands the slow with the cripple there. So very easy follow up. The W2 able to land from Santorin. That's your big part of your damage. The follow up here now is going to be very dangerous because Perks now no flash on the early levels. Oriana does have to respect a lot of these all in attempts from Lee Sin and Jensen can continually throw out these threatening moves, whether he has Core JJ there or not. And Core, of course, walked by and swept the ward that I believe Blabber put down recently. So this is now a lot of pressure available. And Perks has one member right behind him. They spot Santorin. Flashless, mm -hmm. by the way. He's got to be careful. Will be stunned. Will have nowhere to go. And Cloud9, they read the dive and they punish Santorin for it. Yeah, when you see a double stacked minion wave, that is an objective in itself, Freak. So, you know, when Jensen's building this up, Cloud9 recognize it, and they call for the collapse with Vulcan and Blabber coming over. My hmm and my question marks mm. were actually to the positioning there for Santorin because they saw Blabber come over. They did not have eyes on Vulcan, so they didn't know that it was both of them collapsing for the defense. But even still, just seeing Blabber, he opted to walk forward and still look to continue the dive rather than call it off. He could have just exited that bush, you know, yeah. uh, and they could have called off the play, but that is a little bit 
of stubbornness on the side of Team Liquid and not accounting for Vulcan roaming around. As he's definitely been one of the very best supports that we've had in the league, especially if you consider the game where he roamed up to save Fudge and get the big double kill. Here we go, though. Q's gonna land! Huge <laughs> damage from Jensen! Q Max Lee Sin even gets him over the wall to get him to safety. Is it not the best feeling, Freak, as Lee Sin, when you get to use the body of your opponent as your escape, too? Oh, <laughs> yeah. kick, kick him over the wall, take that body for a ride with the Q resonates right there. Jensen Lee Sin is actually the star today. It has not frequently been the big star for Team Liquid, having him on a lot of the you know newer melee mid lane champions. They did struggle a little bit in the early stages of summer incorporating some of those new solo laners, but definitely off to the perfect start here for Team Liquid. And now Santor ended up getting away from this one as TL finally shoving the bottom lane a little bit themselves. Also just, you know, pretty great game. Obviously Team Liquid two to one. I will say, good CS on the bottom side is, is also doing a lot to keep Cloud9 on even footing here, though. Uh, because while all this action is going on mid, Sven is accruing his own lead down there. Here's Jensen once again. You land your Q first, kick him right over the wall. You've got your escape to get away from uh, the collapse there from Viego. So not really in a lot of danger there. Nicely done by Jensen to force the 1v1. All right, top lane is fighting back and forth right now. One hit would let the ultimate come across, but he's not going to be in range for that one. Fudge is going to back off. Has not recalled, by the way, out of the top lane. Alfari has been able to get his own off uh, and was able to walk back to lane. Has items, has a CS lead here as well. So Fudge, we'll see if he wants to burn teleport or if he's going to drop a wave. It's the one small drawback of TK right now is you don't push quickly at all because you do not have uh, you know much AOE at all anymore. You can W the wave, but it really doesn't do that much. Um, and until you get your Sunfire, it, your wave control is very lacking compared to things like Renekton with even just base kit already has a lot bigger advantage in pushing super heavily, but also rushing Iron Spike Whip uh, does give Alfari more options as far as looking for roam timers. You can give yourself those 30 second windows to help work with your jungler or just get some deeper vision. So we crest closer and closer to the mid game now as we uh, approach the time where Mythics come, come online. Maybe that's more at 10 minutes, but you know certainly ultimates are available right now. Perk's gonna be handed the blue buff and gets to keep playing this one out. Overall, a small lead for Team Liquid. No team has gone for Dragon. Rift Herald, of course, now that that has spawned, this is gonna be an object of attention. The support's spending a lot of time in mid to help with the dives. And as Team Liquid make their way over, Santorin puts his control under the pit, sees that it's not being hit just yet, but I am expecting a fairly early Rift Herald play. Definitely by the looks of the resets, both teams are keeping their bottom laners in the bottom lane, so they're not over committing to this. They don't want to give up extra resources, but double support roam timers actually. Now it's Core JJ's, the only support left up here. You see Vulcan going back to bottom lane, and now they strike. An early flash, but the flash follow. Alfar is going to get the big stun, and the interrupt is there. No way out. Fudge pops the thick skin, but he will die. Kill donated to Alfar. It's going to take a while, by the way. <laughs> thick skin has a three-second <laughs> cooldown, so it's already back up. He's <laughs> Alfar is like, all right, where's my team? All it's right. TK. Never underestimate TK. Yeah, the W cooldown, by the way, is far too long. It interrupted, so it's still going to be back up. But there is a cross-map play. Fudge built a lot of time, and it means Dragon goes over. It does mean push here on the bottom side for Cloud9. Top side, as you stated, is going to be Rift Hail, the next transition. Playing off of this Sejuani plus solo laners is, has been effective. However, Cloud9's Counter-Strike also earns them turret plate money, even with the Zig's ultimate going down from Tactical. Uh, should be another push here from Sven on the Aphelios, and it is going to be the difference. Uh, you know, Infernal Drake traded, basically, over there. Eventually, we'll get the... Rift held, but Here we go. it's going to be a redive. Tactical is alone, and he is going to be 1v3. Brombolt starts it, lands Q afterwards. Absolutely no way he survives this through crowd control. Vulcan Force to flash. You're kidding. Wait. He did live. Okay. I said no way he lives, but the damage was not there. I, I have to be corrected. Well done, Tactical. Satchel charge forward, then flash back uh, right under the turret with the teleports coming in. You have to be a little wary of continuing that dive. Does get dicey there. So they, in the end, get flash and the extra teleport out. It 
it's still a measly lead for for Team Liquid there, especially for you know the solo lane is for Alfari for the Lee Sin. That is of course the focus for the team composition. But we should remind people there is a little bit of a timer on this team that they have. Uh, their damage will fall off later compared to Cloud Nine, so they have that in their minds. And with the mm -hmm. Rift Herald being picked up, definitely expect them to force another play get a pick and then drop Rift Herald so you can get the most out of it and really make a deep incursion into Cloud9 territory. Because if you don't do that, it's it's going to get much more difficult. And I want to point out the fact that Perks has gone for a fairly non-standard build on the Orianna, going for the Leeching Leer here, which means Rift Maker. That is definitely not the most common mythic choice, but it's the tankiest option that's viable. Yeah, going to give him some more sustain versus the super brawly composition. And if, if the sustain damage is not going to be there, yeah, there is Zig's Burst, but uh, if the front line can't get on him, then he's going to have a lot of time to make use of the passive autos, make use of uh, the Rift Maker extra leech as well, and sustain through some of these. Well, let's take, take stock about the fact that now that we are getting Mythics online, Team Liquid have done, I mean, truly incredibly off the Rift throw, off all the kills. FTX Gold Advantage, 2.3 thousand. Like, it's an early game comp, and Kobe, the early game is going their way. This is... I would say better than expectation with a comp like this. Getting getting the Rift Herald is pivotal in any of these earlier focus compositions. And so that's where the big burst comes from. You know, you get all of those turret plates, plus the first turret bonus, plus now top side is open. So it gives you freedom to push quicker and then get more roam timings to make proactive plays on the other side of the map. You can see they they actually rotate Jensen up top. This is really good because uh, they, they don't have teleport here on Alfari anymore, so they rotate their other solo lane teleport up to the top side. He's the only one uh, left. And Jensen on Lee Sin obviously can also push extremely quickly and then look to, again, use this Sejuani ultimate to lock someone in place, force these picks, and, and charge them down. Alrighty, so now we get to see what's coming up next. Um, the Ooh. early game snowball does not turn into a fast dragon stack. What's up, Kobe? I believe with the minimap, uh, uh, it looked like Jensen was pulling the wave to not quickly push it. I want to see if we can get the camera up there. Yeah, he just pulled the wave to not quickly push it. This one is eventually slowly going to bounce back because they only have three range minions here. But he's not hard pushing. He's creating another one of those big build up waves to force oh. multiple members topside while the rest of his team goes for the dive. They're going to execute this tower on bottom side and push in another objective. Can Lee Sin yeah. get out on top side though? They need another thousand damage dealt for the tower will die, but that's certainly possible. Great interrupt there by Santorin. Fudge W is not going to go anywhere. Uh, does at least force the Q out, and as the stuns come across, yeah, he's going to be fine. So now it's time for Tactical, do the last 750. Cross map play. You see they've been waiting for this dive on Jensen. He held that wave for a while. Does he have to pay for it? Going to be stunned up first, going to be stunned up second. Shockwave's going to lock him up as well. Gordon can buy some time. Bot turret finally falls, but so does the opposing mid laner. Out goes Blabber, heals and ults away. Well, they get their kill on the top side. It bought enough time, though. It's always this exchange. That was a calculated risk by Team Liquid. Jensen held the wave, denied some minions there to allow both teams, uh, you know, to push in on both lanes here. So bottom turret is down. They got the extra turret plate on mid and the extra minion wave in. Pretty comparable stuff right there, even with Cloud9 finishing up that kill. If they don't get the extra turret plates off top side and they can't get out. Here we go. Perks has to walk out. Mana is low. No turret to save him. Vulcan not going to land the ulti as Jensen sidesteps it. Now you've got to try to find a way to live on this Braum. <laughs> but he's like, never mind. We're jumping to a minion. We're going to alcove game. I'm just going to buy time. time. Waste time. Yeah, what else Dragon, can happen on the rest of the map? Dragon Dra coming up. Yeah, Dragon's coming up. He's wasting time trying to allow Aphelios to burn this Dragon. Core JJ showing topside means it's going to be a rush down to the objective. It's all about these small timings, trying yep. to draw people away from the objectives. Cloud9 do get the Dragon. That will be number two for them, despite the early gold lead of Team Liquid. C9 are building more and more for their late game. So some quick math, just uh, for anyone curious. Uh, the, the rough math on a single elemental Drake is about 400 gold total in stats to your team. This is, again, a bit of a, a, an average, but uh, a kill is roughly a Drake in terms of immediate gain. 
The wave pressure afterwards, of course, can mean more. As you can see, Top's being pushed down. But now there's going to be a fight in mid. Watch for that one. Nice flash by Tata Goods away. And now, can you even live on Viego? Satchel's coming across. A lot of damage. Blabber just barely stays alive. But he's not going to get away from Santorin. Trades one out already. Vulcan of one hit. That's going to be second kill so far. Oh. And Team Liquid still just picking up the kills. Shockwave not going to find Jensen. Three kills picked up. They do trade one back. And it's time for Perks to run away for his life. <gasps> barely away from Alfari. Sven has some time to fire. And yes, it is only a three for one so many kills nearly picked up so close there perks gets out flash on oriana and can kite away for his life so both cloud nine carries being up does mean they can finish up and defend the rest of these waves that was a huge swipe there from team liquid to grab these extra kills though and this means they can leave behind a bunch of wards it becomes so dangerous now for cloud nine they're trying to stall and rotate between their defensive towers but look at the setup from c9 they're trying to force it because they feel like they've got them pincered here. They didn't have vision on Santorin, and you immediately flash for tactical, but he gets out of there easily. The huge amount of AoE damage from the Ziggs actually gets them low enough and sets them up for some cleanup kills here on the side of Team Liquid. And when Jensen comes over, you think this one is, is just going to be lights out for C9 and Perks, but he's got the Zonias. It buys him enough time for Sven to finish off the kill on Lee Sin over the wall, and then the carries can fight off the rest of these melees, which is pivotal. If those two carries are alive, then you still get your gold income where you want it from the minion waves that have been pushed up to your towers on your two carries. Sven dealing the massive amount of work there for Cloud9 yeah. to try and keep them in this. And Sven really is, I think, an absolutely incredible team fighter. Three pentakills on the year already. He gets first blooded one every 20 games. Like, the man <laughs> is really good at not dying, but doing amazingly in team fights. He's going to have to do that over and over again because yeah. Team Liquid now cresting 5,000 FDX gold advantage for themselves yeah. with this team that has so many dive opportunities. Everybody on the front line is so tanky, and they've got the long-range follow-up damage of Ziggs. It's exactly where you want to be in the earlier game-oriented you know, team comp that they have with almost a 6,000 gold advantage now yep. and Rift Herald number two. They are very well positioned to push this one ahead before they have to worry about anything close to multi-item Aphelios and Oriana. Well, you're going to look at 750 uh, or 800, I believe, for a uh, overall gold from a tier two side lane turret. And top and bottom are both ripe for the picking. This could instantly drop here, even without the help, because guess what? Tactical Auto W is going to kill that thing nearly. Ah, oh, can't quite get enough damage, but that thing is, is practically dead. There we go. Minion damaged out. You can backdoor that. No problem. Money in the pockets, money to spend. And now Team Liquid. Mid lane, tier two gone as well. Five to zero in turrets. This is a slaughter so far from these kills, from these turrets. Core JJ dropped low. Oh, the satchel's there, but Blabber gets the kill. But now watch the mid lane fight. Santorin could not keep the engage. Does Cloud9 find a way to win this in the 5v4? Running away as Blabber. Jensen's in, Alfari the same, but gonna be zoned out. Shockwave on a two, but still not a kill. No one dropping just yet. Back in for Santorin, not just yet though. And that satchel means there's no further push to be had. And you see how close it is, even with a 7,000 gold lead for Team Liquid, Aphelios can rip through you if he's got the white gun. So many melee champions. Sven has to use both summoner spells, though. Those are very critical for this setup for Team Liquid. Burning off both the cleanse and the flash from the Aphelios is going to be pivotal. Now he can only rely on Fudge to save him from the all-in dive. Well, you can see the atomization is just defensive for Cloud9. You mentioned the dive, the double summoners, or it's shield bow, it's it's mm -hmm. um, the rift maker on the one side, and Atmos Chain's first option on Fudge. Like they are trying their hardest to just withstand the damage and then team fight from there. Because Ven knows if they don't kill him, he rips through this entire team. Yeah. He's got red white right now, so Team Liquid do not want to fight on those guns. Um, Definitely going to have to be a little bit wary as they pick up their, their farm between towers because, again, returning to the point of how dangerous it is for Cloud9 and how well Team Liquid have kept up their vision. You see this vision line very deep into enemy jungle. Taking down all these outer turrets allows Team Liquid not only to rotate quicker, between these objectives, but also to take away all these jungle camps. So you lessen the, the strength that your opponents are getting as time does accrue. Still 7,000 gold lead and Rift Herald number two about to jack those numbers up. Yep, and this is nearly gonna one shot it. There you go, Satchel plus Herald. There you go, bam. Okay, apparently it just died to just the, the charge. As far as I can tell, either way. Hey, good stuff, well done.
and Team Liquid. They're gonna get ready for the next one. Cloud Drake has spawned. It is gonna be a Cloud Rift here. This is absolutely no difficulty in taking it. Now, there's a couple things that make this super dangerous for Cloud9, and I don't think they're gonna go for it because there's a lot of vision that's left behind. So when you go to even try and contest for something like a, a Dragon number three, a Soul Point, which would be great for you, you know that this has all been littered with wards by Team Liquid, and they have the easiest and best turn in the game. Sejuani and Leona. All they have to do, look over their shoulder, long range ultimate, they pick you off if you try and contest one of these objectives without the full commitment of actually looking for the team fight, then you're just gonna fall further behind. So C9, they make the choice. They're not gonna you know, force anything as far as trying to stack up to Soul Point, and they let Team Liquid take this, as you say, fairly inconsequential by itself objective in just a, a small dragon and no big payoff of the soul in sight. So TL just keeps, gets to keep running the map. Baron Nasher has spawned. That would be an easy claim as well. And I think from that, they nearly end the game. Team Liquid had lost five straight games to Cloud9, the last two in the finals and all three in the summer split. <laughs> Guess what? They're ending that streak right now. It's going to be Team Liquid almost certainly walking with this one. Yes, the scaling is still a concern. If, if they cannot find anything more to do, if the Baron stalls out for the next 10 minutes, eh, who cares about three clouds? Cloud Drake is not going to do that much more to change the game state. Maybe Cloud9 weathers a storm and gets back to the point where they want to be with some gold in the late game. But TL for now hold all the cards. Meanwhile, we're just hyper-focused on the items here for Sven. He's been sitting on this last Whisper for a while, should be up, able to upgrade to Lord Dom's uh, immediately. As soon as he gets that gold, that is a really, really big difference to these team fights because pretty much everybody that he's hitting, all four of these melee Team Liquid members have large amounts of health. Most of them have large amounts of armor as well. And that is his main job, is trying to cut down through these members. It's not like they're trying to dive tactical or anything. Yeah, double aftershock. That is a lot of extra armor. And here we go. There is the Baron setup. A control ward gets rid of the vision. And now as Vulcan checks a brush, they blue trinket. They know what's going on. Tactical still ready to go, though. Has taken some damage. Jensen going to help zone out as the minefield comes down as well. The wards are in, and TL are going to fall back. Fudge is going to be OK. It's Tongue Lash in, and that is Baron attempt number one foiled. Only have to do that a few more times for Cloud9. It's probably the most dangerous point of the game for them while they're trying to scale up. He just hit upgrade here on perks. Got his Seraph in addition to the Rift Maker. Two item power spike comes in for him. Sven's will follow pretty shortly. So Team Liquid, no. They've got a bit of pressure on their shoulders to push this game forward. And it's been one of the big criticisms levied at this team over the years is how quickly and precisely can they actually push game states forward when yep. they've got advantages like this. Can you actually execute on an earlier game-oriented champ select because they've had the most success throughout their history on those later game scaling, you know, team fight oriented ones that are a little bit more simple to finish with. Absolutely. Ooh, looks like uh, the Raptor walked over to another mine and it was Tactical who gained big chicken there. Well done. And now we get to try Baron maybe again. 145 on the next dragon. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly Teal don't want to give that one away. You don't want to give the out of a Cloud Soul. That's uh, quite a lot of money, honestly. In, in total value, you're getting pretty close to what, you know, a Baron would give you in gold pickup. So, you know. Worth looking at. Lord Dominix is done. You'd mentioned the power spikes coming through. Uh, we're still, you know, halfway to Mythic here for Fudge. Uh, two items, of course, for pretty much everyone on the TL side. And something big to look out for, I think, is really important here are the Squires Bloom cooldowns for the side of Cloud9. Because we mentioned how good the turn from Team Liquid is, their ability to turn off of objectives after starting it. They're all tanky, so you can just start it up and then look for your Leona ultimates, look for your Sejuani ultimates through the jungle like they're doing now. So if C9 are able to rotate their cooldowns on their Scryer's orbs here to keep Vision of Baron, that is the best way to do it. They can't walk up the brush and use Orianna Ball because even that range is punishable by the ults from Team Liquid. Yep. And so you just have to be very careful. Do not double up on your uh, on your trinkets here. Keep your vision rotating. And as long as you remain calm, yeah. buy yourself some more time. 
It is one thing I like about the Ziggs pickup. There aren't a lot of bot laners who can reach backline, mm. like alongside the Sedge Renekton. And by the way, they've got maybe a pick. There's that damage out of Ziggs, and it nearly destroys one of them. It's going to be the runaway, but the stun's still going to land. The chase is in, and Vulcan's down. One for zero. The gold lead at work. Shockwave does not do enough. Sven cannot do the rest, and it's two for nothing. Stun's going to land. Guess what? Perks is at 100 HP and forced to run back to his base. Two for nothing. And the map below logs the team liquid they blew it right open freak this is the most pivotal point in the game and the rewards are huge with baron you can get inside the base this is the last big stepping stone that team liquid had to place in order to finish out this game such a big gold advantage they find their pick core jj just walks into the jungle. He's like, you know what? Yes, start on me. I will take any pick I can get because he knows the timer is running down on him. Team Liquid, no hesitation there. Really good follow-up because you saw Jensen coming in with Lee Sin again. This is his best Lee Sin game that he has played ever. Yeah. And, it, and it's at the right time in playoffs here. Game one versus Cloud9. Rematch of the finals, and it is hype. Is. You can see the engagement core today, but he's just so tanky in the follow-up damage. Like, yeah, he just gets chunked instantly. Like, he's a tank. That's Tank Braum. Uh-huh. Takes a Ziggsult. 40% health. And Team Liquid, no. We just have to get that kill. So Santorin, again, throws his Sejuani ultimate. It's the second time he's done this to just get a low health member as they're as they're flashing away. And he locks him in. Jensen's able to come in. Alfari even swoops down to make sure they can run them off. No Team Liquid member dies, so they get the two kills. They get their objective. The Baron pushing power is so, so big. So if Cloud9 can actually stall this out and deny Team Liquid an inhibitor turret, then they still have a way to you know try and scale into this game. But this is going to be a rough two minutes for them because Team Liquid knocking on all sides. Yep. Let's see how much you get out of the Red Bull Baron power play because so far it's 700 gold above the Baron itself because I believe, uh, I don't believe they got any turrets. Those were already down, but the yeah. anyway is being pushed in. It's some extra money, of course, and now they're ready to go for quite a bit more. Uh, mid lane turret is satchelable, but keep in mind that that's the only escape Tool Tactical has save Flash and doesn't want to have to burn that one. But he can probably find a way in. There you go. This is the time. Whoop! Down it goes. Meanwhile, bottom side, Alfari just trying to buff up cannon minions and get that little chip damage. That's why you see Sven here is farming the minions away from the turret so that they don't get up to it and yeah. slowly whittle it down. Same thing for top side there. Perks having a hard time taking that cannon minion down, and it whittles this tower down to 50% as yeah. Jensen's got another one up there ready to go. And here comes the next Siege down towards the bottom lane. How well can Cloud9 defend this one? Not well, by the way. Zig's passive is outstanding. Another turret is down. 3,000 gold of the power play. Inhibitor turret's worth 300 gold apiece. In map control, it means a lot more. They're going to find that root tactical. He's forced to flash to get away. Stun's going to land. This could be Sven. No, he's going to stay alive. Had the cleanse on cooldown, but was not under threat. So a trade of ultimates for the most part. But double inhibitor is down. Yeah, I like Tactical's flash there as he tries to walk away, but he realizes the particle in the air is going to hit him. So flashes before he's going to get rooted. Make sure there's no counterplay. For oh, oh, huge play. They know he's flashless. Tactical, he's going to get hit. Can he stay alive? He lives. He lives. The team is there. Blyber could not find the solo. And this is going to be probably the game ending. Baron buff ends in 15 seconds. The C9 Nexus will not last much longer than that. Tactical cool, TP. Yeah, back into the base, full health, and Merlin and Amakon to boot to cut the healing down. Waiting for the last Baron Dev wave. They got a few more modes in this one. Flash combo comes in, big dive. Is it going to be enough damage, though, as they're just chunking down Vulcan? He's staying up, shot by both of Huge knockup for Fudge actually finds three, and Alfari drops Sven. low. He will die. Huge shutdown to Sven. Big Jensen tries to find it, but no, only just the one. Is that enough, though? As support drops now as well. Sven can't get the rest. He will drop, and it's time to die. Big Benson comes through with a triple <laughs> kill, and Blabber's left to watch as the Nexus turrets will fall. An early game comp for Team Liquid, and they end the game in under 30 minutes. Huge game from Team Liquid. They throw down the early game melee focus top side of the map. They play to it. Jensen has the biggest Lee Sin yeah, yeah, game of his career. Stomps out Cloud9 with a huge early lead. They even push it forward. They get over the hurdle of the mid game Baron. Pick it up. End the game on that push. Yeah. And Team Liquid opened this Series with such a statement, Freak. 
so often the history of Team Liquid and Cloud9 has been the, the seesaw of Cloud9, early game focus, getting these skirmishes. But if you throw this type of draft out in game number one from Team Liquid, yep. it, it has such a big ripple effect for the rest of the champs select for this best of five. And you look at the bands that teams throw against Team Liquid, the top list, <laughs> none of them are these champions, right? They're bringing out something entirely different from what other teams are afraid of, and they made it look great in the first game. So beautiful by Team Liquid to set things off. We got more games to play on the other side of the break. We're going to be meeting up with the state from Analyst Desk and diving into that Team Liquid win. See you soon.